In 2012, Six Flags New England debuted what was sure to be one of their biggest flops in the park's history. Goliath was a Vacoma giant inverted boomerang relocated from Six Flags Magic Mountain. It was well received while at Magic Mountain, but the second it made its way to New England, it immediately had problems. It was rarely open, and those who did get to experience it hated it. The ride was outfitted with Premier trains instead of the standard Vacoma ones, and they are some of the worst vehicles I have ever experienced on a roller coaster. I only rode Goliath once, and it was like suffocating. The restraints were so bad. By far one of the worst rides on the planet, so to no one's surprise, it did not make it very long. It closed in 2019. It sat standing but not operating for a couple years before finally being demolished. And new for 2025, taking its place is Quantum Accelerator, a dual launching Intamin straddle coaster. This is the first new roller coaster to open at the park since Joker in 2017, and that was a cloned ride. The new coaster prior to that was Wicked Cyclone in 2015, which is a redo of an old ride. The last ground up new original roller coaster that Six Flags New England received was Batman the Dark Knight in 2002. So it is a big deal that this ride is finally making its debut. Hopefully we won't have to wait super long for the next new thing to come here. But this is sure to be a great ride. We have a max height of 59 feet, 2,604 feet of track, top speed 45 miles per hour. It is obviously family thrill. If you've experienced one of Intamin's other straddle coasters, they're known for their quick transitions and staying low to the ground. It's a very, very good in-between ride for those looking to work their way up to the big dogs. I really think this is going to be a roller coaster that's going to be enjoyed by all, including coaster enthusiasts, because the park is marketing this as having 11 different airtime moments. Now, this is going to be floater air, not ejector, but some of those hills are going to be pretty low to the ground. It's going to be a neat experience, and my big hope with this new roller coaster is that it rides like some of Intamin's straddle coasters over in Europe and not the ones currently in the United States. The other models of this can be found at the SeaWorld parks, like SeaWorld San Diego, Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and SeaWorld San Antonio. Those are a bit more on the mild side. Rides like Juvalin and Yukon Quad have more of a punch to them, while still succeeding in being great family thrill rides. So we'll have to see where this falls. Now in terms of a theme, Quantum Accelerator will be yet another steampunk-themed roller coaster. I guess it's meant to tie in with the area around it, which is very western, but here they're taking the approach that you are riding on hover bikes. So you're weaving past these various mechanical elements with the end goal that you will time travel. The ride's main character is Professor Screamore. This is actually a reused character from Six Flags America. He was brought in for Steamtown and their old Vacoma SLC coaster. I did not expect them to bring him over here, but you know, I think the steampunk theme will work fine. My biggest gripe is primarily just the colors. It's almost identical to the coaster directly next door, and I can't comprehend why they thought that was a good idea. But at least they're attempting a theme here. Most of the rides here have no theming, or if there is a theme at all, oftentimes it's to a DC character with just a couple signs up. So it'll be interesting to see on that spectrum where Quantum Accelerator falls. But let's walk through this ride experience. You'll start off departing out of the station and immediately hitting launch one. So this is a rolling launch. You do not come to a stop right before. To my knowledge, a max speed has not been listed for launch one. The first part of this ride is absolutely on the tamer side. It's to get things going. You're going to bank to the right and rise upwards into a twist, then going to the left. There's a fun little turnaround moment where the ride vehicle levels out and then banks again to the left-hand side. And as it follows this curve around, you're then going to accelerate directly up against the station now to the other side of the ride. They're really utilizing the space here. And this is where you're going to enter your highest moment. And you do that in this little like step up. This whole ride is very twisted. It's a lot of like unconventional motions. It's very clever. Now from here, you have your biggest drop and by no means is this going to feel like a traditional roller coaster drop. That being said, it is probably the largest drop that we've seen on a straddle coaster. You take that element swiftly into a right hand bank and this is where things kick up a notch. We have a real low S bend, which moments like this, in my opinion, really shine on straddle coasters. One of my favorites is Jet Rescue at SeaWorld Australia and that has a lot of moments like this. You just whip through it. I love those fast paced changes in direction. If Quantum Accelerator has moments like that, then people might be underestimating it. We have another bunny hill, one of the 11 airtime moments that was discussed earlier, and then a swift change in direction now to the left-hand side, banking right up against the ground, rising up, leveling out, then twisting to the left, very similar to what it did after launch two. There's a bank curve to the left, you then switch to the right, travel around back up next to the station. There's a very brief moment where you'll level out, bank to the right, switch again to the left, then back to the right, and then that is the final break run. 
So it's a lot of similar motions over and over and over again, but it's very creative with how it executes them. I like a lot what they came up with. It wasn't what I originally pictured for this plot of land, but I think it works very well. And there's really nothing quite like this in the area. Six Flags New England specifically doesn't even have a launch coaster. So the fact that this has two, even though they're tire driven, it still very much fills an obvious gap in their collection. Hopefully the next roller coaster will be a bit more of a high thrill launch, but we'll have to wait and see. I think this is gonna be a great fit at the park. This also marks another new roller coaster in the Six Flags chain by Intamin. Of course, we have Georgia Surfer now opening next year as well. This one, however, is completely custom. Clearly a lot of thought was put into this ride. I personally don't expect this to be like a top roller coaster or anything that's like, oh my gosh, that was insane, but it doesn't need to be. That's not the point of this attraction. I do hope it'll at least be the best of its kind in the United States. We'll have to see how it stacks up against rides like Juvelin or Yukon Quad, but it's something very good in a park that desperately needed some love, a park that's home to a lot of clones. Anything original is a win in my opinion. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of Quantum Accelerator coming to Six Flags New England in 2025. If you agree with the points that I brought up and of course, stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.